Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here at my next Avatar news update video. This one is going to be, uh, the news obviously, is that we have the North and South Part 2 and 3 product description. So, uh, spoilers if you don't want to be, you know, potentially spoiled about what happened in Part 1, because obviously we're getting previews for Part 2 and 3 here, and so it might uh, tip you off as to what exactly happens in Part 1. So, uh, anyway, for those of you sticking around, let's first go back and look at the North and South Part 1 description. What does that say? So it says, um, When Aang leaves to aid Zuko with the Kamurakage, Katara and Sokka return to the Southern Water Tribe by themselves. Katara is shocked to find that her beloved village has become a bustling city, with none other than her father, Hakoda, in charge. A northerner named Melina seems to be behind this change, pushing the North and South to be more unified, but what are what are her true goals? Um, so yeah, that book is coming out September 14th, 2016. So that, at this point, is, you know, a month and, you know, just over a week away. So, more or less a month and a half away. Um, so let's get into the, this part two description. We get here, um, After attempting to kidnap Katara and Sokka, Southerner Gilak leaves a haunting note for Hakoda. Soon you will see the truth, chieftain. The vow leaves everyone on edge, including Katara, who remains wary of the two tribes' integration. As Northerner Melina announces a partnership with the company owned by Toph Beifang's father, her own brother comes forward to defame her. Have Katara's worst fears been confirmed? So, a lot of interesting stuff here. First of all, a new character who seems to be presented as their our villain. Though it's odd because Melina in part one is basically presented as like, oh, what are her true motives? What's she actually doing here? Yet here they seem to be like, okay, maybe she's good. And then something seems to happen where it's brought back up that she might be bad. So some interesting stuff happening here. But obviously, of course, it's North and South. We're dealing with the North and South kind of being unified again. And you can instantly see what the problems are going to be because we know the the south formed from the north there was only a, initially there was only a northern tribe and the southern tribe split off because of all the crazy rules and customs that the northern tribe had so you can see what the problem is going to be when we're trying to unify them again and that the north as the kind of main tribe is probably going to want to have some sort of a rule over what the southerners do and that's going to cause a problem for people who are used to the freedom that they had had in the south and you know, having got so little support from the North because of what happened because of the war. So you can see what the, the problems created are going to be. It's very much a kind of different but similar situation to the whole Yu Dao, uh, Fire Nation, Earth Kingdom claiming ownership of the same piece of land and, you know, who should have it to the new people coming in that are in charge or the old people who um, have lived there for a while. So v very interesting stuff. And yeah, so Katara is wary about the idea of the two tribes integrating. That's going to be interesting to see how they approach doing that. This idea that she comes home and instantly sees North and South unification. And she is kind of you know, to some extent responsible for for helping the South be rebuilt and that she inspired Paku, she kind of changed his mind and got him to come back and help rebuild the South, starting that relationship again. But did she want it to go this far? Like, clearly the North isn't going to 100% change and fix everything just in the, the time span since book one, uh, when Katara was there. So, you know, she, clearly some of the North stuff is still going to have an effect here. And a lot of that depends on what exactly Melina wants to do. And she's the one obviously pushing for the North and South to be combined, uh, unified. And here she is. She wants to announce a partnership with the company owned by Toph Beifang's father. So that's the Earth and Fire Refinery. So now they're trying to strike a deal with basically you know the it's a mining company effectively which hints that you know in the part two cover people are saying potentially it's a ra radio tower i think initially i said it was like an oil drilling platform type thing if that is indeed the case with Toph, that's why Toph is involved here i can see that being the, the the issue and that explains why Toph is coming in it's that oh she's acting as a representative um to the south uh, from her father and that's why she's coming rather than going to the south to like explore the southern tribe herself because she's part of team avatar you know it's more business related so 
that's actually quite interesting to know kind of more details about why exactly Toph is going. Now, the wording on this is a little bit weird in that, like, as Northern and Melina announces a partnership, her brother comes forward. So, Melina's brother, like, I, I first read that and was just like, wait, Sokka comes forward to defame Katara? But no, I think it's very much hinting that, uh, based on the wording, that it's Melina's brother comes forward to defame her, and what exactly is that? Um, and, you know, th then there's the whole idea of, like, this southerner Gilak, who attempted to kidnap Katara and Sokka, for what reason? Leaving a note saying, soon you will see the truth, chieftain. So, clearly this guy is someone who really believes in the south, and thinks that the north coming in are going to be some sort of a problem. And let's get into the part 3 description, because this adds another layer onto this whole situation. So, North and South's part 3 description. Fire Lord Zuko and Earth King Kuei arrive in the Southern Water Tribe amid protests of Gilak's impri Im imprisonment. While the leaders hold council to solidify Melina and Hakoda's unification plans, Gilak breaks free and leads a powerful rebellion. In the face of these two opposing tribes, Katara will have to make peace with her nostalgia and distrust to save the home she loves from being permanently torn apart. So, okay, straight away, Zuko is going to be involved in North and South, at least at the end, as is King Kuei. So this is becoming a kind of world issue kind of thing what's happening down in the south all of the world leaders are getting involved Zuko, Kuei, obviously Aang's on the scene Toph representing the north and the earth and fire refinery and we obviously have the, the kind of leaders of the uh, southern tribe there interesting to see if they ever involve like uh, Chief Arnook or, or whoever's the chief of the north at this point in time in on this and then people are protesting Gilak's imprisonment why? If he actually kidnapped, tried to kidnap Katara and um, Sokka, of course he should be imprisoned, but it hints at something more going on here, that they believe that imprisoning him is this kind of sign that you don't care about what the Southerners feel about this North and South reunion. Is that the sort of thing they're trying to get across here, that um, the, the, some of the Southerners feel that Hakoda and this alliance with Melina is just you know, not listening to the people, that they don't want this um, unification, but they're forcing it through anyway. Then he breaks free and leads a rebellion, and obviously, like, that seems to hint that he's more of a villain and trying to cause chaos here, but um, just in general, it's going to be interesting to see what really causes the huge rift here. Is it just the whole customs thing and tradition? Is it about leadership or something like that? Because ultimately, like, at some point, what happens is that the Chief of the North ends up being the Chief of both tribes. But we also know that, like, Sokka was at certain points the Chief of the South. Or is it just a thing where, like, Unalak overtook that position? When he came into power, he demanded that the South remove their Chief and he be the Chief of both. Is that what they were going for? And then what actually happens here is that the North is the overall Water Tribe Chief... But there is a Southern Water Tribe chieftain just for ease of kind of having a leader down there. Um, but yeah, Katara will have to make peace with her nostalgia. So clearly she is not overly happy with the idea of like this new modern city that she's, that she's going to... That's basically her home now. And she kind of wishes things were a bit more simple. And she's... I suppose this is kind of hinting at her character arc. She's going to be very much like... She doesn't like the change potentially initially. But has to come to accept some of the change. But is maybe against overchange or something like that. Um, but yeah. And distrust to save the home she loves from being permanently torn apart. So I'm almost getting the idea here that she's going to be against Melina for like almost all of this book. But ultimately, Melina is actually going to be like a good character or something like that. And Katara is going to have to trust her in a key moment. And that will help save the day against this Gilak character. But um, yeah, the, the only other thing here that doesn't specifically mention is that at San Diego Comic Con, they seem to hint that this book would cover the origins of the issues between the North and the South. And I took that as meaning that they were going to cover basically why the South formed in the first place, and really get into the origin of both of the tribes or something like that. I'm kind of wondering now, does that mean that we're going to get a flashback kind of story type thing here? Kind of like Lady Tianhai in the Rift, uh, like Ursa's backstory in The Search, um, the, the Kamurakage story, the first Fire Lord in Smoke and Shadow. Is that what we're going to be getting here with the history of these tribes? Or is it more that 
a lot of these characters are going to reference the way things were before and we're not actually going to get to see that it's just going to be like here's a new issue and it relates to something in the past that we're not actually going to get to see so overall really interesting descriptions and um, definitely add some extra layers to it this southerner gilak you know further adding that melina is probably going to be this character we 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 as the audience even like flip-flop on and that like oh is she good is she bad kind of like katara and then and uh, there's just gonna be a lot of interesting kind of political stuff going on here like i, I didn't expect zuko and quay to be involved um and then looking at the part two description again yeah this uh we know why top gets involved now because of the earth and fire refinery and uh, yeah, just the idea, Melina's brother as well. That's another layer on things as well. So uh, very, very interesting stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's about, about that's about all I wanted to say about the descriptions. I'm interested in, in North and South, and I'm I'm contacting Dark Horse pretty regularly to try and get a early review copy for North and South Part One. So definitely keep an eye on my channel. Keep an eye on the site Avatar: The Last Airbender Online dot com. And you might see a review pop up at some point. But I'm still obviously working on actually getting the review copy. So uh, yeah, I'm going to end the video there. And just say that you can follow me on social media. On Twitter and Tumblr. Links to them are in the description. If you want to help support the channel. So, you, so I can make more videos. Better videos. Links to my Patreon page. As well as my uh, PayPal donation link. Are in the description below. So you can help support the channel. So yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching. And bye.